Hey everybody, this is Brad Dyke reaching out to you and saying hi. Um, I kind of thought about a few things and I decided, you know, if I've done all this work and I've got all this built out, yes, there's a potential risk of, of something happening to the boards, but, you know, the whole point of it was, was can I do it or not? So I decided that I changed my mind a little bit on this, on option three that I'm gonna platform it into a deployment model and get it staged and put it out there tonight so you guys can see it and kind of get a feel for it and all that good stuff. Anyways, uh, so with that being discussed, what I'm talking about specifically is doing my second tier temperature testing on the blade platform in a rack enclosure, working in a functional state, all five units up and running, and this will give me my comparative models for how much workload am I really seeing here, and so on and so on. So anyways, with that being said, uh, this will involve the staging and the mount platform here. As you can see here, we've got the 2U on the front to control airflow. I've got a free flow out here without any interruptions. On the sides, as of course you can see that uh, I haven't gotten the placements in place yet, but I'll be getting that next. And then of course, I place this inverted shelf because I want it to catch because of this lip here which will act as the kind of the corral for the surge strip unit and all of that it'll be here and then when I'm done all five units will power up they'll run for a period of time if they burn up we're gonna find out if they don't burn up that's great and uh, of course right down here as you can see I've got these SATA tiers we'll probably bring that into the test loop as well just for grins uh, but uh, anyways, with that being said, stand by for a minute while I get this going. Okay, so one of the things I've got to do is I want to simplify powering on and powering off. So I'm going to be mounting this guy up into the rack enclosure going into the search strip. He'll draw some current, but it should be fine. Uh, I'm going to use the Velcro standard to allow us to basically keep this properly secured. I might do two pieces, I think. And uh, that will be going up inside the rack on the back sectional where the electrical uh, source and power will be. So right up there, I think, will be the good spot for the strip. I'll probably put it something like that. See, I've got that set up and the cord will come down and plug into the PDU. So that should give us the flexibility to put these five surge strip, I'm sorry, not surge strips, but power supplies in an operational capacity. Okay, so unfortunately I can't show you guys the footage of me putting Velcro on these units, but I don't think it's critical in regards to uh, it being an issue. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and put this up and in place so that we have a power source that is ready for plug up. And uh, let's see here. Oh, forgive me, my reach is a little on the odd side. Now I'll use my conduits to feed the electrical outlet unit plug down and below and out of the way. And then plug it in. So as you can see there, this guy will go here, he'll go down through the conduit set, down below here, and then plug up right here. So now I've got plenty of plugs, up to six devices I could plug on this side, and that will allow me to be able to do what I need to do in regards to getting that done. So I'll now reorganize these units here so they're manageable and get it in a place where I can start feeding up connections up here. Again, I do have to pause the video because of the reality that uh, when you do this kind of stuff, it tends to uh, require two hands and holding the cell phone in the process just doesn't help. Okay, so now that my two hands have been used, I have a basic setup here. I'm not going to clean this up too heavily because that's not the goal here. The goal is to do testing. Uh, when I want to finalize something, I'll completely clean it up like you can see down here Fully secured and everything, but you know, I've tied up the basic cablings and try to get things somewhat under control and uh, Here you can see the power feeds are going in and it's ready to go live 
Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be connecting these uh, network cables uh, into the fray and uh, starting off with the basics here and getting those in place. And uh, let's see, I think I'll do the yellow one. Hang on a second here. Okay, so that should work. Now I'm not a complete heathen. I do use ties and secure stuff just to kind of keep it all under basic control. But all in all, generally, it's pretty manageable in regards to uh, output and so on. So next goal will be to check the trunk, make sure the trunk is good. This is the trunk right here. If you look back, you'll see that it's lining up. Again, it's a temporary rigging going straight into the... Uh, the actual Nortel switch, which is right in there. My big, fat, huge, gigantic Nortel switch. And with that, I'm going to make sure the airflow is in the clear. And, the, and then I'm going to do the temperature checks on this to make sure it's working right. Now, one little challenge I do have, because I'm using a 2U footprint to protect the top sectionals, is that the power button is right up here at the very, very top. Not visible to the human eye. But uh, you can see it there if you underneath the edge uh, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip the power on we'll see how many units automatically trigger that happens all right let's just see what the LEDs say there is a few of them I'll go ahead and stir up these others all right so they're all on now and uh, we're getting telemetry on them, good. All right, so the Proxmox is coming up and I'll stress it out tonight and see how it does. And then I'll take my numbers, my temperature numbers here, put them in comparison and then I can give you guys a report on how effective this is gonna work. Now, also, I have a blowing effect going on down here, which is gonna be introducing some help with this because remember the air is being pulled in from the front and these drives here that I've got they are also involved and they're going to generate some heat and of course down here the true NAS platform and its discs which are below are going to generate some heat so we're going to see how well this setup works in conjunction to getting this in a good place so this is just a progress report and uh just to get a kind of a gauging of how things are doing, I'll go again and repeat my same steps as before in regards to doing testing. I'll also secure up the baffle section. This is the baffle section right here to kind of get that a little bit better sealed up because that can cause some problems. And I'll just use a 1U plate most likely like this. And that will uh, give us some basic uh, flow if you look back, it's a little bit better now. Yeah, it has a little bit more continuity to it Okay, so that right there should work So again, what did I do really well nothing really major I put in these units and as you can see they're up there reporting activity and They are active uh, in the sense of a proxmox cluster They have resources locally and they have resources remotely in the uh, true NAS platform as well as they have external resources such as USB 3.0 dish storage. I've got the air flowing correctly, so it's, it should all flow as it should. And with this fitting, we'll be able to get this in pretty good shape, uh, and it might be something I want to stick with. It might not. I don't think so, but it's just a thought. Now back here, as you can see, the extender's right here waiting for the next blade to be added, and technically these are blades now, since all they are circuit boards. And I, as you can see, I've got the ability of doing one more blade up there with one, the current plug. And my, you know, my basic shelving is very adequate for this in regards to doing the handling. Um, the other thing that's important here is to understand that the nature of the ability that I could use quite a few USB outputs. But I've decided that's not, we wouldn't do that in the enterprise environment. Now I can use it for archiving, such as these guys right here. And these are also eSATAs. I could do eSATA if I really wanted to, uh, which of course would require some complexity because there isn't an eSATA port on these blades. 
But what I could have done is I could have put in M.2 SATA converter and just have it go out to an eSATA interface. But right now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to keep this kind of structured because it is a diagnostic test. So making that statement, I think the reality here is that as we look at the Proxmox and really vet it really good, I will probably still take it apart and put it back together and go to phase one because it offers a lot of protection that phase three does not offer. But right now I have all those parts laying all over my desk and I think I might actually have to do a video on how to clean up an, an IT lab once you've done all the damage you've done for three straight months. But uh, that will be for maybe some other time. Um, please keep enjoying yourself doing this kind of stuff. Keep learning. If I can help, great. If I can't, sorry. I tried. Uh, the bottom line of the, in this particular situation is that we want to be successful in helping you guys out as best we can. Uh, with that being said, I hope you have a great week coming out, and God bless, and take care. Bye-bye.